Hello everyone. So welcome to the Builder Track. So I'm Muskan Mangla, volunteer in the UAS community. I'll be moderating this session. During the next 45 minutes, you'll be listening to Dr. Luca and Firaz uh, present web developers beware of the targets for SAS tenure code. Please submit any questions you have during the session in the QA tab just to the right of the video in the Hava platform. I'll be asking Dr. Luca and Firaz your questions in the last 10 minutes of this session. Please note that the chat function in Zoom for attendees is disabled, but you can leave your comments and chat using the chat tab in the Huawei. Well, I'll introduce the speakers briefly. Dr. Luca uh, is a part of the security research team at SAP, where he is contributing to the research strategy and to the software security analysis area in particular. Firaz is a PhD student at SAP University doing uh, his research on the web security domain. In his work, he focuses on the static application security analysis to point out to the difficulties of these tools and the solutions to have better coverage of the source code. Now, handing over to the speakers for this session and over to you, Dr. Luca and Firaz. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, good morning. Uh, so, uh, pleasure to, to be to be here. Uh, so yes, I will share this presentation with Faras. I will start with the short introduction, context, etc. Then Faras will go into the technical details, and then I will take over for a few conclusion uh, remarks. Uh, this work is also a, a, a collaboration with other uh, security researchers. Uh, Julia was a, a former intern, she, intern uh, at, at SAP uh, Security Research. Uh, Fabian is a ch chief sh scientist at ShiftLeft. And David Balzarotti is professor at, uh, at Eureka. Um, so, and, and all this work uh, is really, uh, let's say, applied research work you will see today, and is uh, uh, under, uh, under uh, an European project that is called Testable, that started last September. And uh, uh, what you are going to see here are first results coming out from that project. So, if you like the results, please follow up uh, on the, let's say, on the news in that project. Uh, for us, if you can move to the next slide, please. Thanks a lot. Yeah, okay, this is the agenda. I, I already said I will start with some context and for us, we'll take over with the, the technical details because this is really uh, uh, something he did uh, during his PhD that is still ongoing, but uh, is really one first uh, good uh, mission he achieved in, in this PhD. And so for us, we present uh, a motivational exa example, why it is important what you are doing, the approach that uh, he developed, we developed, and then I will take over for some conclusion and next step. Uh, next slide for us, thanks. Okay. So the context is really SAST, Static Application Security Testing. So I don't know who is in the audience, but I would suspect that uh, there are some uh, uh, developers among you, web developers. Uh, and so perhaps some of you has used these tools. Uh, but let me quickly say what these tools do. Uh, um, so essentially, imagine you have an application. It can be a web application, but it can be also any software application, right? Uh, well, if you have the code, what you can do is to use a, a static analyzer, so a SAS tool, in order to analyze this code uh, with the hope of detecting some vulnerabilities. So the code will analyze the code, we will analyze the, the source code uh, of your, the tool will analyze the source code of your application, uh, probably creating a kind of internal structure initially, abstract syntax tree with some additional relationship, maybe control flow, also some data flow, uh, whatever, and then they will start uh, uh, navigating in this internal structure to discover vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting, SQL injections, others. Um, however, I mean, you, you get uh, findings from these tools, sometimes you get false positive, uh, and uh, perhaps you, you analyze, you audit all the, all the findings, you fix the, the true positive that were uh, also reported, uh, and at some point you reach uh, a verdict that everything is fine. So you get the traffic light uh, that is green. Uh, okay, so now what is the conclusion? I mean, can we really say that uh, everything was analyzed in your code and that uh, there are no vulnerabilities? So are we really sure there are no false positive, uh, false negative, sorry, in that, uh, in that application? Uh, so this is the kind of question we were uh, um, uh, investigating, uh, knowing that SAST tools are widely used in industry. So uh, I'm from, we, we are from SAP. SAP is a large software company and we use SaaS tools internally uh, to, let's say, during our software development life cycle to verify, to analyze a program before shipping, right? So it's not the only 
uh, tool that uh, we use. It's not the only approach. We also have some dynamic analysis inside, but static analysis is for sure one of the means we use in order to uh, ensure that our products are more secure. Uh, and especially when it is about injection vulnerabilities, these tools are believed to be pretty, pretty good. And actually uh, also in the OWAS code review guide, uh, there is a version two. Uh, I don't remember when it was delivered, but you have a link just below. And if you go on figure one and figure two of that uh, guide, you will see uh, a kind of survey that was done quite some time ago in 2015. But I don't think the, let's say, really the mood of developers that were uh, 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 participating in that survey changed. And they were really saying that, yes, indeed, SAS tools, they believe, is a good weapon against injection vulnerability. Uh, Thras, can you move to the next slide? But so, as I was saying before, so was all the code analyzed? Are we really sure that there are no bugs, no, uh, let's say, undetected vulnerabilities, so false negatives that are just under this gap? And this is the kind of question we have been investigating uh, to understand, uh, let's say, how good or how, how easy or how hard it is to do testing with the SAS tool. Huh? And how can we improve that testing if, if we can? Course. So, and this is what we call testability somehow, testability for SAS. So, how easy is to test an application with a SAS tool? What is that makes really difficult for a SAS tool to, to analyze an application? What makes it easy, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So now I leave the floor to for us to go into the technical details. Thank you, Luca. Hope my voice is clear. Uh, so as Luca mentions that uh, what we are missing or is a static, what, what much confidence can we have with, stat with the static tools? And with you, I would like to go through an example. Sorry, I went to this, an example. So here we have an old CVE. And with this old CVE, there's a vulnerability and the tool were not able to discover the vulnerability inside. But let us go to understand the, the path of this, of this code and then we will go more uh, in, in more details. So here actually we can see that there's one line of code which is required once. So here is a PHP code and required once in just including a file. And we can see the file, it's, it's a variable. So if this variable is controlled by an attacker, he can control which, which file will be included. He can do some uh, manipulation here. So he can, he, he, we will have a file inclusion vulnerability. So for that, we call that the sync. So we have the sync and we need to, to check if this sync, there's a value coming from a source, a source that's meaning a, a, a value coming from an external. So the user can, can control this, this variable, then he can control which file will be included. And then maybe the, the user will it will be an attacker, which will manipulate here and we will have the vulnerability. So if we go backward from this from this line, we can see that the act file is coming from this from this variable act, and it's coming from this GPC get string. Inside GPC get string, we can see this there's this call user func array. In PHP, call user func array is just to call a function dynamically. So the, the name of the function can be inside a variable, or in, in our case, the name of the function is just defined here uh, statically. So from this line, the function GPC get will be called. <coughs> Sorry. So if you go to the function GPC get, we see that we have the, the post, which is the source. So we can see now that there is a path from a source to a sink uh, where, the source, where the user can input, uh, enter something and then he can manipulate which file will be included and that will call the, for a file inclusion. It's important to understand the, uh, the, the, the vulnerability here uh, to check then with a the static tool. So we just take this, we just take this uh, uh, vulnerable code that we already discussed and we scan it with static tool and the static, many of the static tools, they didn't discover this vulnerability. What is the main reason of that? We have a doubt that's okay. This call user func array, we are calling the function dynamically. What if the tool is not able to understand this line? 
and how we can check that. To check that, we just called uh, we just use something called the testability pattern. Actually, the testability pattern is a, the testability pattern is very simple code. It has a source and it has a sync. The same as we explained before. The source is, is an uh, input is coming from an external user. And the sync in this case, it's an echo for, for the values that will cause an XSS, but it's not really important to understand what type of vulnerability here, but we just say, okay, we have a source and we have a sync. And there's a path between this source and sync. So now we will try to play around, try to make it uh, a bit more difficult inside. We will inject our targets in between the source and sync to check if the tools they are still able to handle the star bits or not. And now in, the, in our case, we have the case of call user funk array, and we want to, to test the call user funk array. What we do? Thus we just simply we try to with our patterns, we try to be straightforward, cover only the the tar bits that we want to cover minimize the code. So here we can, we can see that we have the call user func array. We are calling the function f, passing an input, returning the input, and then we are printing it. So here's just the vulnerability. Uh, and we are sure that we don't have another target, only we have the call user func array. <coughs> what about the static tools? When we run, uh, when we scan this code with the static tools, we can see that four out of six uh, in our arsenal that they were not, uh, not able to handle this code and discover this vulnerability. And one of them is the commercial tools. We have two commercial tools in our arsenal. One of them is a commercial tool that didn't detect the vulnerability here. What we do is we try to transform the pattern. So here, actually we are just calling the function uh, we are using call user func array uh, built in function to call the function gpc get but actually we can call the gpc get directly we don't really need to use this this line and then in this way we are fixing the the, the targets and there's no targets anymore but how we can be sure there's no other targets in the past between the source and the sink after doing this transformation we scan the code again and then we found that the commercial tool is able to detect the file inclusion vulnerability in this code. That's meaning now the, the, the problem is solved and we are detecting this, this testable target. It's important to point here the effect of the testability target. It could be just a simple line of code or multiple line of codes that they are blocking the flow for the static tools and the static tools cannot cover what is after. In this project that we are, are discussing the CVE actually, this function which is called GPC get strings, it, it's called many, many times. And every time the, the tool will, and it's always returning a source. Every time there's a call, the tool will, will, will consider that as a safe value, that it's not coming from an external user, just because of one line of code that it will not able to handle. So we discussed the effect. Uh, also, after creating the, our pattern, as we already uh, uh, already saw, we create different instances. We try to make it a bit more difficult and, and check different cases between between the tools. So we already discussed when the function is defined statically. What if it's defined uh, as a constant inside the code? And if we apply constant propagation, we, we can know which function will be called. So it's the name of the function is inside a variable with instance two, but actually this f variable is already defined before. And with instance three, thus we can know a part of the name of the function. So we can have like, for example, here, the function is f underscore, then there's something. So I can have a set of uh, possible functions that can be called, which is f1 or f2. So that will help us to reduce the search space and maybe we can focus only with these two functions. So now I will want to, to, to go, so after we discuss the, how the effect of a one one testability target, I would like to go through our research methodology. 
our work is, is uh, divided on three phases. We will go deeply in each phase. But let me say that in the first phase, we create the patterns and we check them with the static tools. With the second, uh, we want to, to find their prevalence in the real projects. And in the third, we want to transform this pattern and see, and see their impact on real projects. So let me go, begin with the pattern creation. For the patterns, we didn't want to be a language specific. We want to, our approach to be generalized. For that, we choose two different languages, which is PHP and JavaScript. For many patterns, there is a lot of intersection between the two languages, but it's also, it could have one, one language have more features than other, depending on the features that it's providing, depending on the dynamicity of the language, or depending also how the tool is, uh, is provide, uh, behaving with, with, with this language. Maybe the tool will be better with one language than other language. And because we want to be uh, systematically uh, with our creating for our patterns, we go through the documentation of the languages. We, we read the documentation, we check the corner cases, we check the discussion of the community about the difficulties of some of, 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 of some cases for the language, and we were creating the patterns. So we create 120 patterns uh, instances for PHP and 115 instances for JavaScript. After creating the patterns, we measure them with our static tools. So we have uh, some of the, the research tools and some of commercial tools. We can see that the commercial tools in most of the cases, they are behaving better. Uh, but overall, for, uh, uh, for PHP, there's no language support more than 50% of, of our patterns. While for JavaScript, they reach the 60%. Well, uh, meanwhile, if we take the combination, that's like how many patterns that is not solved by any tool. So the combination can cover uh, 66 percentage of the patterns in PHP and could, can reach for 82 percentage, percentage for JavaScript. So like that, we create our testability, it, uh, our patterns library. But what if our, our patterns are just corner cases or just fancy features are no one used? Some, something that is not really exists and maybe it's just like, okay, uh, we can, we can just ignore them. To answer this question, we, we, we went to check the prevalence of these projects, uh, of these patterns and real projects. So we tried to create a diverse data set of projects. We went to GitHub and we clone uh, low popular projects, 1000 projects that they have between 20 and 70 stars, medium popular between 200 and 700 stars, high popular, 1,000 projects that they have more than 1,000 stars. Also, we found a website, it's called Source Codester, that is offering for the community an open source website that they can use a part of the code or, or they can use the wall code. So we combine this data set and we create, we have in our data set 3,340 uh, projects. After, after collecting the projects, we begin to use our patterns as a query inside the source code to search the occurrence of this of this pattern in this project. And we found that our targets are highly prevalent. Actually, uh, we will experience, uh, we will have 21 unique patterns in average per project. And we will experience one pattern every 20 lines of, of, of code. Just to explain here the, the graph that we have, so each point is representing a project. The colors is representing the sets that we have, as we said, it's a high popular, medium popular, low popular, and the source code ester. The Y will represent the number of unique patterns per project, while the X, it will more make me understand how many line of code I will pass until I will experience a pattern. So in, for that, we, the X is the number of line of code divided by the occurrence of all the patterns. So here is the patterns 
for for all for for all the for all the tools in our in our work but we already saw that the commercial tools are behaving much better than the uh, the research tools so we focus on the tool to uh, uh, commercial tools for php and uh, we take only the tarp the patterns that, that, that uh, was not able to be solved by these tools and we are we again see that our our targets are highly prevalent even for the commercial tools so the commercial tool will will have an average certain unique pattern in project and we will experience one pattern every 47 line of code while the other uh, tool is uh, a bit better that it uh, we will have 8.5 unique patterns in average per project and we will experience one pattern every 203 line of code so now we see that the the projects are highly prevalent the, the patterns are highly prevalent and we already saw the effect of one tarp it's how much it can make it difficult for the static tool to handle so now we can see we can estimate that how much we are missing uh, false negative when we are using the static tool and we see that the tool has cannot handle all the situations what will be the main message of this high prevalence i will return back to this point but before i just want to mention that we have a table in our in our paper explaining all the details about the patterns uh, the name of the patterns the dimensions the tool answer and their prevalence between the, the four sets in our data set and we have this example. Actually, when I create this pattern, I was saying, okay, who will use this call user function array for calling a function uh, statically, like if they can call the function uh, directly. But I found that this, this, uh, this, this target, it's used in 208 projects of, out of 1,000 projects in high popular projects that they have more than 1,000 stars. And to take, to take the the message from from the high prevalent prevalence of our patterns it will help the user to make them aware about the area of the code that can be uh, confusing for the static tools and instead of doing the manual work everywhere they can focus manual their manual work in a specific area that the tool is not able to handle or maybe it could be possible to transform some of these patterns and then it will be reducing the manual work for the for the developer or the security team and we will have more uh, we will reduce the risk of having false negative so how we will do this transformation and how how is the impact of these patterns that's what what we, we, we discussed in our last phase of our experiment in this phase we have the we we, we have the manual and the automated experiment. I just want here to say that okay, we have the just just to to, to have a, a brief uh, idea before we go in details. So I have the project, I I scan it with a static tool, and I have my reports. Then I will do some transformation in the middle, and I will have another version of the project. I will scan it again. I will have a new uh, another alert. I will compare between the old and the new one. And I will check the new one because the new one happened because of my transformation. And then I will have as alerts. The tool will give me, okay, this path is possible to be vulnerable. But in my side, I have to check if this path, uh, if it's a true positive or if a false positive. So the manual pattern transformation. I went to an old CVE. I, I scan it with a static tool. If the tool couldn't find the vulnerability in this, in this static tool, then I will discover the pattern in, in this vulnerable path. After I point, point the, the patterns, I will transform them in the whole project. <clears throat> so it's an old CVE. So we return to the version of the, the old version of the project when was this, this problem exists. And we, we, take the, we take this version and we do the transformation on this version. 
after doing the transformation, we run on the static tools and we check the new alerts manually. At the same time, we went to the latest version of this project. And we do the same transformation and we run with the static tools. So the, the, the problem or the vulnerability is already discovered before and it's already solved. So uh, if, if we think about it, it shouldn't be, it, it shouldn't be uh, now vulnerabilities in the latest version. But is that, the, is that correct? I will answer this question in a few slides. But before I will go to that slide, I just want to say we did the transformation and we experienced three types of transformation. In the first one, we already discussed this one, it's semantic preserving. So actually the code is the same. I'm not changing anything. I'm just calling, instead of calling the function using call user function array, I'm calling it directly. In the second approach, in the second transformation, sorry, I need to apply over approximation. And here in this example, actually, it's just like we are uh, forwarding the user from one PHP file to another PHP file by using a JavaScript. And the tool is not able to understand and parse this JavaScript to understand this flow from one, one file to another file. What I do simply is that I delete this, this, uh, this uh, redirecting and I did an include a normal in PHP. They are the same almost. But in PHP, when I have a, when I define a variable in a, in file one, I can use it in file two, so there's no problem here. But when I do a, a redirect and I define the file as a variable in file one, and I will come to use it in file two, it will be not defined. It will be an error. While in the third uh, type, uh, we need a developer help. Here, I, I need to explain a bit this pattern. So in this pattern, we already say, speak about the source and the sync, but here's the tar paste here, here. It's a built-in function, it's called extract. Extract will take an array and will generate uh, variables from this array. The keys in this array will be the name of the variables and the values in this array will be the values of the variable. So here, the A actually, will carry the value of AAA, which is, the, which is the source. So here we have an XSS vulnerability. And when I was doing this manual work, I experienced a code like that. Extract post and then a, an SQL query, uh, and then I have username and password. From where this username and password? Even for maybe a, a person who is reading the code, it's difficult to know. So how the static tool will deal with that? Actually, this username and password are coming from the post. So here, we need the developer to do a notation to say, okay, this username and password are, are part of this post. Then if we look to the code, it will be very simple for the static tool now to discover the SQL injection in this, in this case as, okay, I have, variables coming from the post going to SQL query without sanitization. So here we have an SQL, we have an SQL injection. So uh, in our paper, we work on five CVE for PHP, five CVE for JavaScript. We have all the details on the paper. We put the CVE number, the vulnerability in this CVE, the patterns that we transform and the new alerts that we discovered. So for PHP, we transform nine patterns and for JavaScript, we, we transform 17 patterns. And in the vulnerable version, actually, after doing the transformation, we found 200, 204 true positive real vulnerabilities are exist in the vulnerable version after transforming these nine patterns the static tools were able to detect them and 20 uh, uh, in JavaScript. So that was about the vulnerable version. While in the latest version, we have we discovered 
16 new confirmed vulnerabilities from confirmed by the developers and gains a CVE about them. It's an old CVE. It, we have an old CVE and the problem is already known. And uh, till the moment we are discovering these vulnerabilities because of these targets. So actually it's important when we receive a, when we receive a, a report from, a, from, from Bug Bounty or someone to tell us, okay, you have a vulnerability here. It's not enough to fix this vulnerability. I need to search for the reason why this vulnerability was exist and I didn't found it before. If I'm using static tools and the reason that I uh, is the tar pits. So I received I receive the report. I go to the main reason, which is the tar pit. I try to transform it and then I run the tool again and I will have a better coverage. I will have less, less risk of false negative. So this manual transformation done on just 10 projects. But actually these results give us the motivation to go to automated pattern transformation. For, this, for that, we choose, we choose five pattern that we say, okay, we will, we will transform them manually, uh, automatically, sorry. We will transform them automatically on the data sets that we, we discussed before, 3,300 projects inside. And we will compare the, the alerts before and after, and we will check the new alerts manually. So here just a table to explain that we have R1, R2 to R5 is the, is the, is the patterns that we choose. And we have their occurrence in each set in our data set, depending on the occurrence and the number of the projects. Then we have the number of new alerts that we found. And out of these new alerts, how many true positive we have. So in this experiment, we refactored uh, 1,170 projects with the occurrence of 32,000. We had nine, around 9,000 new alerts in 72 applications. Overall, we discovered 370 new vulnerabilities in 43 applications. Out of these 370 new vulnerabilities, 55 vulnerabilities in high popular projects that they have more than 1,000 stars. So we can see that just by transforming five patterns that we have, we have already around the, we have 120 instances for PHP that we could have this coverage. So it's, it's, it's giving us, it should be giving us an alert just how to, how to work with the static tool and it's, it's, of course, it's reducing the manual work a lot, but it's still, we cannot really say, okay, we are safe after using the static tool. And the tar pits will help us and help the static tool to have better coverage. So we already discussed that we have many discoveries depending on two different experiments, manual and automated that we did. We did the responsible disclosure for all the vulnerabilities and we gained the CVEs, uh, all the details actually about, uh, about the manual and the automated experiments, about the CVEs, uh, ab ab about, uh, about the, the patterns, everything is, the, is, is inside our uh, repository on GitHub. So please uh, feel free to, to go to there and, and check all the resources that we have over there. Now I pass again to, to Luca. Sorry, just the time to unmute. <laughs> Thanks a lot for us. Um, so yeah, indeed, just to wrap up and to take the main uh, takeaway messages out of this. So you saw that we created the stability patterns and we created those for PHP and more or less more than 100, more than 100 also for JavaScript 150, whatever. We saw that these patterns this, that, that capture what we call tar pits, so things that uh, might confuse stat static analyzers. Uh, we saw that these uh, tar pits are real, that uh, if, you, if you search for them in real application, you find them. 
And actually, uh, I think this is also a very good added value of our work because while we create a pattern that is a small test case for a SAS tool, we also create uh, what we call the discovery room. So what allows us to uh, discover the pattern in real application, the, discover the tarping, the tarping in real application. And then we saw that by transforming them, it's not always possible. Uh, Feras mentioned that there are these three types of transformation we, we identified so far. So it's not always possible. Perhaps sometime we need help from the developer if the developer wants to, you know, to help. Uh, but at least the developer will know that that part of the code will not be analyzed by the tool. Uh, so that is already quite uh, important information because it provides awareness, right? And we saw that by doing transformation, so by transforming our targets, by removing our targets, we were able to discover and to detect a lot of vulnerabilities. Uh, that was a very huge amount of work, especially for Ferraz. He mentioned about 9,000 new uh, the, the findings from the static analyzer. He didn't analyze all of them, of course. He analyzed, I think, 2,700. And out of them, he was able to discover 370 new vulnerabilities. And if you count also with the manual experiments, it's more than 400. And by doing the, the responsible disclosure, developers of this project confirmed that uh, uh, essentially what we were, uh, uh, let's say, um, auditing as true positive was a real true positive. I mean, and all in all, what, what this transformation show uh, is that by doing that work, we can really increase the testability of the application when the application is tested via a SAS tool. Uh, there is also something else that we haven't done in our, in our work that perhaps uh, can be can be done, and I think it, it, we, we believe is something uh, uh, important for the community. Um, so essentially, our targets are available for the community, and if uh, SaaS tools wants to use them in order to measure what they support and what they do not support, uh, and to see also what can be supported in the new release, perhaps uh, that is something that can be done. So what I'm what I'm saying is, from one side, you can try to improve the testability of an application by transforming, by removing the target. From the other side, you can try to improve the tool by making them supporting more targets. Um, so what are we working right now and what are our next steps? Uh, so we are trying to enrich our pattern, pattern catalogs. One thing that we are doing is to focus on the Java language also because this is a language that is very widely used but overall in the world, but also at SAP. Uh, and also we are, uh, uh, let's say, maturing our research so we can see that our pattern schema uh, can be improved. We can add uh, other features to the pattern that are, uh, that are important. Uh, I, I, I cannot provide the details now, right now. We don't have the time. We are also developing a framework to operate this pattern. So we want, I mean, it will be kind of a database uh, or file system based, but it doesn't matter. So we can create patterns. We can add those patterns in our catalog, we can measure those patterns against an arsenal of uh, static analyzers, and we can discover those patterns in real application. And perhaps then we can also you know, have operation for transforming some of them in an automated manner. What we want to do uh, in the context of this uh, European project called Testable is to have, uh, um, uh, let's say, a tie with, with OWASP, and we are going to propose an OWASP project so that we can involve the OWASP community. We would do this by, by the end of this year, I think. And what we would like to do is our pattern, our targets are already available to the community, but we would like to, uh, to make them more specific to the OWASP community uh, because, I mean, the web is the area we are, we are targeting. And we hope that by doing so, the OWASP community can also, uh, you know, participate, uh, create perhaps some patterns on their own and help us, help the entire community to improve uh, the, the results on the static analysis side. So if any of you is interested to, to use already now the patterns, get in touch with us because the link that uh, Ferraz provided that, that is in the slide uh, is about the target we had at the time of uh, paper that is, uh, let's say, six months ago, more or less. So we have definitely updates that we didn't push yet because we are still refining the scheme of the pattern, et cetera. But if you want to use them, get in touch with us, but we can provide anyhow the latest version so that uh, you will not work with, the, uh, let's say, uh, an old version. But as I said, by the end of the year uh, with the OWASP project, I think we will deliver a, a good stable version of, uh, of these uh, this targets. 
Can you move to the next slide for us? For us? Can you, yeah, thanks. Okay, so get in touch with us. Uh, you have the emails here. I already mentioned this is a joint work with other uh, researchers funded by an European project. Uh, there is a blog that we um, recently uh, brought. Uh, if you want to have a look, you have a, a link in the slide. Uh, is I mean, is a short blog. You can get a bit more details if you if you continue reading. But uh, I mean, I think I think also if you if you want to um, uh, say explain our work to others, that could be a good means. Uh, and if you have if you want to have really full technical details, then I would suggest to go into into our papers or just come back to us. And with that, thanks a lot for your attention, and uh, we are open for questions. Thank you, Luca and Faraz, for the wonderful and amazing session. It was so insightful and very deep about the SAS and how you analyze the patterns, how you automate it, and then how you compare the tools. Very insightful session altogether. Now jumping to the Q&A, uh, if audience has asked any of the questions. Uh, yeah, one of them has, has asked, like, are you providing the slides? Where do you publish the paper or do you have a link or any kind of information so that so that they can have a read of your paper uh, so i think the slides that we are just seeing is probably the one having those links yeah. um so uh it just if you if you go in these two links you will find the information that you were looking for if there is anything else that you that you need just get in touch with us i mean not the problem at all absolutely sure and the rest, uh, I do have the query. So I just wanted to know, basically, how do you discover your testability targets? Okay, maybe I can take this question. <clears throat> so as we mentioned at the beginning, we have a, a joint work with the shift left. And actually, they provide to us a, a, <clears throat> and a framework that we can generate the code property graph about the source code. If someone doesn't know about the code property graph, it's a way, a, a data structure to represent the source code. When they, there's the AST, uh, there is uh, uh, the flow between 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 uh, the data flow and the control flow and the call flow. It's a, it's a, a bit complicated data structures, but it's a, uh, it's quite famous for representing the graph. And then they have this their query language to 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 run on this code property graph. And that's what we used actually to, to, to search inside the big amount of, of proje projects and to search for our testability targets inside. Okay, thank you. That is really awesome. And how do you transform them? Can you transform everything or like, uh, yeah. So as Luca mentioned that, uh, Till the moment, it's not really possible, uh, or uh, we don't have enough uh, mature in in this direction of our research to say, okay, how we can transform all of them. That mm -hmm. would be very interesting for the community for the upcoming work, maybe to check more how they can to to, to do the transformation. The five yes. autom the five automatic transformations that we used, we use use them from the T1 type, which is. Uh, semantic preserving and that's uh, help us to not produce a huge amount uh, of uh, false ne uh, false positive when we if we apply the over approximation so that's help us to give a specific number of alerts and out of this alerts we could find a specific like we can find the true positive insight Okay, thank you for answering. And the last question, uh, so how OVAS community can take advantage of your testability patterns? Maybe I can take that one. Um, so yeah, as, as we mentioned before, we, uh, okay, the, the, the patterns are already available. So if anyone wants to use them, he can do that. I would suggest again to come in touch with us because there is a, an ongoing version. So it could, that the person could just get this ongoing version rather than uh, the, the oldest one, um, the other one. Um, however, I mean, uh, we will definitely try to have this OWASP project uh, to, um, let's say, advertise uh, and to make our patterns more tied to the, to the OWASP community. And I hope, we hope that by doing so, um, we will have, uh, yeah, uh, 
uh, more people, uh, uh, let's say, helping us in this work and uh, perhaps making so web application more testable for SaaS at the end of the day. Yeah, okay. Okay, for sure. Thank you so much. And the last question, so sorry, uh, from audience that I, somebody has mentioned that I would be interested, what was the response from the commercial SaaS tools vendors, if any, regarding missing so many targets in the code? So, okay, it's, it's, it's a good question. Um, I mean, we, we are in touch, especially with uh, um, those providing commercial uh, static analyzers. And uh, we had uh, a few discussion in this, in this respect. Uh, it's, it's not something easy. I mean, some of those targets do not require much work to be supported, I must say. And so indeed, that can be uh, pretty easy for some of these uh, SaaS tools to, you know, to release a new version where some of these patterns are, are supported. But something we saw, um, uh, is, is something we, we, are, we, 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 are, we, we thought about very recently, is that for many of these tools, you can also provide um, what are called kind of modeling rules. So essentially, you can tell the tool how to interpret a function that they are not able to interpret at the moment. So um, that is something that is pretty interesting for us because we have the pattern that capture a target that makes something difficult for the tool. Okay, we have the discovery rule, so we, we can discover this target inside the real application. And now what we could do, for some of them at least, is to provide this modeling rule that will tell the tool how to solve the target, so how to interpret the target. So that is not a target anymore. So somehow the one developing the target, the creating the target, creating the pattern, can provide these three information. And by doing so, uh, the tool immediately should be able to cover that pattern, to, 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 not, to support the target, and so to increase the coverage and the testability of the application. So this is something we, we uh, just started, and I hope uh, we will have some results in that respect. I hope and I believe I'm sure about that that has totally answered the question and thank you for you so much for your session it was really wonderful and amazing to hear you guys and shortly we'll be moving to the next session in another 10 minutes so let's wait for it yeah. okay thank you very much thank you very much thank you bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.